On today's Winning Cures Everything, there's been a lot happen since we last spoke. We're going to talk about Alabama coach Nick Saban retiring, uh, Alabama hiring the Washington coach Kalen DeBoer, and the coaching carousel that ensued from there, uh, along with a little bit more. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. It is the Wednesday, January 24th edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. Of course, you can follow me on X. I am at Winning Cures. And this is Winning Cures Everything, where we talk college football news, rumors, and more all year round. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, and man, has there been a lot to go on. Uh, I'm working on the best format for this show going forward. I believe I'm going to settle on Monday and Thursday afternoons on YouTube, and I'll do a short podcast-only show on Tuesday afternoon. So uh, make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast as well as YouTube. Uh, I might toss this thing up on Twitter as well. well. We'll see about that. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do that. Like the video for me. Uh, jump in the comments. Tell me what you think about today's topics. If you want to support the show, you can either become a member on the YouTube channel. I, th- I think it's like two ninety nine a month. Or you can just hit me with a donation over at buymeacoffee.com slash winningcures. Uh, or might I suggest visiting the web store. Right? We've got a lot of cool shirts, a lot of cool designs for other products, etc. Uh, I'm going to try and get some more stuff up there so you guys have plenty of options. Uh, while we're at it, if you'll look in the description, uh, you'll find a link to the BetUS College Football Show. Make sure and subscribe over there as well. That's where you can find myself, Kyle Hunter, and Parker Fleming breaking down games, etc. We're going to be doing a lot more stuff in the offseason uh, with that. So, let's, uh, let's get to the topics at hand. And we'll start off with this. Alabama head football coach Nick Saban announced on Wednesday, January 10th, that he is retiring as coach of the Crimson Tide. Now, he finished his career with some of the craziest records that you can possibly think of. Um, Now, some of you, and we'll talk about numbers here in a little bit, some of you know that I got started talking about college football uh, on the internet a long time ago. I've been an Alabama fan since the day I was born. My dad was in school in Tuscaloosa uh, when I was born as a toddler. I used to play on the Crimson Tide practice field. Uh, My family has had season tickets since the 1988 season. I never really had a choice, to be honest. Uh, So I started a blog in 2006 called uh, Memphis Tider. Started it the middle of that uh, that season so that I could talk trash about the you know the coaching situation with Mike Shula. I lived through Dubose in my formative football years. Thought we struck gold with Dennis Franchoni. Uh, I watched as Shula somehow found a way to win 10 games in 2005, even though that team was significantly less talented than several of the SEC teams that the Tide played that season. In 2006, uh, boneheaded coaching decisions were rampant. If you lived through it, you'll remember the jumbo package. You'll remember Chris Capps, etc. Uh, but either way, my, my blog was screaming for a coaching change. And eventually... Uh, Mal Moore and the Board of Trustees decided to relieve Shula of his duties before beginning a a big national coaching search. Now, I was convinced at times that they were hiring Steve Spurrier and then Bob Stoops and then Saban. uh, And at one point or another, they all said no thanks. Uh, Rich Rodriguez at West Virginia was a done deal. Like ESPN even ran the report that he had agreed to become Alabama's next coach. Uh, But then apparently he met with his team. He changed his mind. Uh, That coaching search was before Twitter, before social media really took off. It lasted 44 days, and I was one of the first to ever utilize flight tracking to keep up with the coaching search. Now, eventually, you know, the NFL season ended. Nick and Terry Saban boarded a flight to Tuscaloosa. Uh, In the 44 days between Shula and Saban, my tiny little blog had over 2 million hits and over 1 million unique visitors. I mean, I was posting all the time, all the time. Uh, But from the moment that Nick Saban, you know, got kissed by a crazy lady on that tarmac, the blog didn't really have much of a purpose. Like, I had created it to complain about the state of the football program in Tuscaloosa. Since Saban got there, there hadn't been a whole lot to complain about since then. Uh, Nick Saban is the greatest coach to ever do it. He won six national titles at Alabama, one at LSU, 
Four of those were in the BCS era. Three of them were in the college football playoff era. He was 7-1 and one in the postseason against AP number one ranked teams, and that loss came this year in overtime to Michigan. He was 201 and 29 at Alabama. Um, if you take out that first season, uh, it's actually 195 and 22, which is more absurd. And we'll, well, let's talk more about the numbers uh, that are just incredible with Nick Saban. I'll go through some of the stuff that Brad Edwards has put out. You can follow him on Twitter at uh, jbradedwards. Nick Saban reached number one in the AP poll in 15 consecutive seasons. The next closest to him was Dabo Sweeney at Clemson and Frank, uh, excuse me, Frank Leahy at Notre Dame with six each. The current active streak is Georgia with three, and I would imagine that they'll they'll get to four this coming season. Just a guess. Uh, Alabama from 2008 to 2023 had one loss to a team ranked outside the top 20, and that was the 2021 game at Texas A&M where they lost on a last-second field goal. The next closest in that span was Ohio State with 10 such losses. Um, Alabama was favored in 164 of 165 games from the BCS title game in January 2010 through the 2021 Iron Bowl. That is the first and second longest streaks of being a betting favorite in college football history. It's 92 straight uh, from 2015 through 2021 and 72 straight from 2010 through 2015. Uh, The next closest to that was Florida State from 1997 through 2001. Um, I I talked about his 7-1 record in the postseason against number one ranked teams. Uh, The wins include three SEC championship games over number one teams, one national semifinal over number one Clemson, and three national championship games. From 2009 through 2020 against AP top 25, excuse me, against AP top five teams, Saban was 14-3. and three. I mean, that is just absurd. Alabama had only 18 players in the NFL at the start of the 2009 season. That was tied for 27th out of all college football teams. And by 2022, Alabama was number one with 58 players on active rosters. Uh, from 2008 through 2020, Alabama went 3-0 and in games where the defense gave up 600-plus yards. The rest of the FBS was 141 and 807. That is less than a 15% winning percentage in those spots. There's a billion numbers that you could look at with Nick Saban. Bear Bryant was 232, 46-9 at Alabama. That's a winning percentage of 83.45%. Nick Saban was 206-29. That is 87.66%. That, that's absurd on its face, but even more absurd in the era of 85 scholarship limits uh, and the college football playoff. Saban's 49 and counting. NFL first-round draft picks, uh, all the wins, the champion, the conference championships. Uh, there is no doubting at this point that he is the best to ever do it. And with the way that things are changing in the sport, I don't believe we will ever see anybody dominate this way ever again. All right, let me tell you right quick about Ticket Smarter. Uh, write my time down on this. Tickets to concerts and games are absolutely absurd. These days, right? The concert industry is booming in a post-COVID world. So, you know, going to see some of your favorite acts is going to cost a lot of money. You want to go see some of the biggest college football games? Uh, Alabama's playing at Wisconsin in September. The get-in price right now is $283. So why not save a little money? Why not find the best deals at the same time over at TicketSmarter.com or the Ticket Smarter app? If you use the promo code WCE10, you'll save $10 on any order over $100 or if you use the code WCE20, that's WCE20, you can save $20 on any order over $300. So think smarter with Ticket Smarter. Very easy to do. Uh, topic number two. What does Alabama look like under Kalen DeBoer against what we just saw with Nick Saban? It's a good question. On Friday, January 12th, Alabama announced that they had reached an agreement with Washington head coach Kalen DeBoer who had his 14-0 Washington Huskies playing in the national championship game just four nights prior to that. Now, I will admit, my initial reaction when people asked me about DeBoer as the potential coach at Alabama, I told them I was not sure how he would recruit in the SEC. I wasn't sure about the play on the line of scrimmage. Uh, After watching, you know, the Joe Moore award-winning offensive line just get smashed by Michigan's defensive line. 
But when it all come down, or excuse me, when it all comes down to it, uh, he built a team to compete in the Pac-12, and his Washington teams handled business inside that conference. Now, do I think that DeBoer was Alabama's first choice? I think he was one of them. Coaching searches are not as simple as, you know, hey Dan Lanning, here's how much we're offering. Do you want the job? No. Okay, Sark. No. Okay, Mark Norvell. No. It it doesn't go like that. You put your feelers out, you cast a wide net, and you see who's most intrigued by the opportunity. Uh, Then you go where you need to. Nick Saban retired at 4 p.m. on a Wednesday, and Alabama AD Greg Byrne was in Seattle, Washington, you know, a few hours later discussing the job with DeBoer. It was as simple as that. Uh, Now, as far as what Alabama will look like under Kalen DeBoer, Alabama has always been known for defense. I think it says a lot about the new coach that he was willing to not just hire, you know, the same full staff from Washington. Uh, He retained the defensive line coach, Freddie Roach. He hired Kane Womack uh, from South Alabama. He was South Alabama's head coach. He's got Josh Chapman and HaHa Clinton Dix on the road recruiting. Uh, He brought in Mo Lingist, former Buffalo head coach. Uh, He was hired as Buffalo's coach the same offseason that he was hired as Michigan's co-defensive coordinator after spending time with the Dallas Cowboys as their defensive backs coach. Uh, and he's also, he's got SEC experience coaching defensive backs, uh, and we'll talk more about him. Um, but he was at A&M under Jimbo and Mississippi State under Dan Mullen. Uh, Wisconsin, D.C., Colin Hitchler joined the staff as well. Uh, as far as the scheme goes, uh, Womack has always run a 4-2-5. And, and while Saban was always known for a 3-4 scheme, the defense in Tuscaloosa has always changed because – the sport is constantly changing. Like, I know Womack is going to be aggressive. Uh, the linebackers, the safeties are going to be violent. They're going to get numbers. Uh, with this staff, to be honest, I don't expect a crazy defensive drop-off, right? Uh, we'll eventually talk on the, shore, uh, on the show more about the transfer portal. But I do think uh, that the numbers somewhat speak for themselves with this coach, right? He is 104-12 and all-time as a head coach. He's... 80-3 and three after his first 10 games at a job. Uh, he was 25-3 and three in two years at Washington, and that was taking over a team that went 4-8 and eight the season before that. Uh, he was 2-1 and one against ranked teams at Fresno. He was 10-1 and one against ranked teams at Washington. The guy just knows how to win, and players want to play for winners. Uh, as far as losing players, because, I mean, the Portal Exodus... You couldn't avoid that, right? I mean, Alabama fans were in shambles on Twitter. Uh, but that's going to happen these days. There's a chance that uh, that Proctor, the offensive lineman, he was going to go back to Iowa regardless. Uh, a lot of people have heard a lot of rumors about what went on leading up to the Rose Bowl. Y'all know what's up with that. Caleb Downs had a, uh, a chance at an all-time bag here. Uh, I don't blame him for taking it. Isaiah Bond, per his own remarks, he didn't trust the quarterback room in Alabama to get him big numbers. Uh, in, you know, a year before next season's NFL draft. These are all easily explainable defections. Uh, But let's not pretend that there won't be players in the spring portal that want to play for Alabama. And there will be plenty. And the GM now at Alabama, Courtney Morgan, he is on top of all this. He's the guy that helped craft both the Michigan and Washington rosters uh, that played for this season's, or I guess this past season's, national championship. I think the most important thing that will determine DeBoer's success or failure is whether or not there's enough rational Alabama fans that can reset their expectations. The schedule is going to get more difficult. Uh, Stacking depth is not as easy with the transfer portal. And to be honest, SEC schools have spent a decade and a half attempting to catch up, you know, to what the Tide have been doing. Uh, Chris and I used to say on the show all the time that it's not any program's birthright to win 10 games every year and... That certainly holds true for an Alabama program that was, you know, fair to average before hiring the greatest coach in the history of the sport. Uh, in the 17 seasons before Saban was hired, Alabama was 137, 71, and 1. That's a 65.87% winning percentage. Uh, Saban was over 87%. He had only 29 losses in, uh, in 17 years, and six of those came in his first season. If the fans give DeBoer a chance and they don't expect Saban results, I think Kalen DeBoer can be incredibly successful with what's already been built in Tuscaloosa. All right, quick reminder, 
hit that subscribe button for me. Make sure to like the video. If you haven't already, uh, subscribe to the podcast. we got big things coming in this offseason. We're going to have some podcast-only shows. Uh, make sure that you are set up, okay? Make sure that you are here with us. Uh, we'll move on to topic number three here. Nick Saban's effect on the coaching carousel. Now, obviously, Nick Saban drastically shifted uh, what was an otherwise mundane 2024 college football coaching carousel. Texas A&M was the biggest job that opened in the middle of the season, and they brought in Duke coach Mike Oko, who was their former uh, defense coordinator. Michigan State hired Oregon State's Jonathan Smith uh, after they filed Mel Tucker, or excuse me, fired Mel Tucker for some interesting off-field conduct, right? Uh, but when Nick Saban retired from Alabama, everything went haywire. So uh, let's dive into what actually happened. Uh, in all, Nick Saban's retirement resulted in six college football head coaching jobs coming open. Obviously, Kalen DeBoer leaving meant that Washington was available, and the job had a little added cachet because the Huskies program is joining the Big Ten this season. Uh, the new Washington AD that came from Tulane, he stated that DeBoer uh, turned down over $9 million a year. That is a more than competitive Big Ten coaching salary uh, to return to Seattle. So, you know they had the funds in place to continue supporting football in a big way. And by proving that they would support the football program, Washington uh, was able to hire Arizona's Jed Fish. So Fish graduated from Florida. There's a chance, there's a chance that he ends up taking the Florida job next year if he's got a good season in Seattle and if Billy Napier ends up on the chopping block. But uh, he had been at Arizona for three seasons. He improved from 1-11 to 5-7 and seven to 10-3 and three this year. Uh, but he's been all over the NFL and college football map since 1999. He, he coached at Florida, uh, Minnesota, Miami, Michigan, uh, and UCLA, along with seven different NFL teams. Uh, the question, of course, was whether or not Washington is that much better of a job than Arizona, who is heading to the Big 12 this season. And the answer is a resounding yes right now, especially uh, when the Arizona AD, Dave Hickey, uh, was fired on January 22nd due to what was deemed financial and operational mismanagement. Uh, most everybody that follows the business of college sports knows that the University of Arizona somehow, uh, I guess the word would be misappropriated, over $240 million. Uh, what we didn't know was that it would affect the head coach because apparently they were never able to get a new contract done with Jed Fish. So Washington hiring Fish meant that Arizona had an opening. And the guy that a good number of Wildcat boosters wanted last time was San Jose State coach Brent Brennan, and that's exactly who they brought in this time. Most of you guys uh, that have followed this show for a while know how much I appreciate Brennan. Uh, what he was able to do with San Jose State was just remarkable, uh, considering how difficult it's historically been to win in that job. Uh, now, it'll be fun to see what he can do with even more resources, even if it's not as much as you know Big Ten or SEC teams might have. Uh, everyone always tied Brennan to the Arizona job, but... When you go through his resume, I'm not totally sure why. Uh, he was a GA there for one season. That was Dick Tomey's last season. Uh, and then he worked at Cal Poly for three seasons. Uh, and then he joined Tomey's staff at San Jose State before he worked at Oregon State and ultimately ended up getting the San Jose State head job. Uh, he played football at UCLA. I, I guess the biggest tie is that his wife graduated from Tucson. I guess that's it. Either way, he's 34 and 48 as a head coach. Uh, but if you take out the first two seasons of him rebuilding that San Jose State job, he went 31 and 26 in his last five seasons. That includes finishing first or second in the Mountain West standings three times. So Arizona plucked Brennan, which means San Jose State had to make a coaching hire. And after working for a year with Chip Kelly at uh, UCLA, after being fired in one of the most ridiculous fashions I've ever seen from Navy after 15 years as a head coach there and another 10 as an assistant, Ken Niamatololo was hired to be the head coach of the Spartans. And if you're San Jose State with limited resources, having to likely compete with Oregon State and Washington State in the future as well, it makes sense to zig a little bit where everybody else zags. Niamatololo, I don't believe, is going to run exclusively triple option uh, like he did in Annapolis. Uh, and to be fair, I, I think the success or failure of this hire kind of determines the fates of any future service academy coaches that you know might be looking to move on to bigger jobs. Uh, I know Paul Johnson did not do 
any Army, Navy, or Air Force coaches any favors by running exclusively triple at Georgia Tech because of how difficult it used to be to, you know, flip a roster for a certain style of play. Uh, but now, you know, San Jose State, they get an experienced, successful head coach that is uh, used to playing with fewer resources than his opponents. We'll, we'll say that. Uh, now, the next two, these were direct results of Alabama's hiring of Kalen DeBoer. Uh, one of DeBoer's best friends in the coaching industry was South Alabama head coach Kane Womack, who was the defensive coordinator at Indiana when he was the OC in Bloomington. Now, Womack agreed to join the Alabama staff as a defensive coordinator after three years leaving the Jaguars in Mobile. And while it may initially come as a shock that a successful uh, Sunbelt head coach would take a coordinator position, coaches are almost more likely to get better head coaching opportunities when they're coaching one side of the ball at a bigger brand school in one of the P2 conferences. Uh, and it makes sense financially as well because, I mean, coordinators at these big-time jobs are earning anywhere from, you know, one to more than $2 million a year at, in the Big Ten and the SEC. Uh, Womack was 22-16 uh, and 16 at South Alabama. His only SEC experience, and this is a little concerning, uh, is as a GA under Hugh Freeze at Ole Miss. But he's had two different stints at South Alabama. Uh, he knows the Mobile area fa uh, fairly well. He's had awesome defenses everywhere he's been. Um, but back to the carousel, of course. So South Alabama needed a coach, and they luckily already had one on staff, and that was former Houston head coach Major Applewhite. He was 15-11 and 11 as uh, head coach of the Cougars, uh, but he was, worked at Alabama and Texas in multiple roles in his 20-plus years in coaching. Uh, Applewhite was the offensive coordinator under Kane, uh, and ever since he arrived, uh, well, yeah, that, that basically 2021 through uh, now, uh, he's been there with Womack the whole time. It makes sense for the Jaguars administration to continue, you know, with as much staff continuity as humanly possible uh, in this situation. So Major Applewhite uh, took, or takes over the job in Mobile. Uh, finally, the last domino that fell was Buffalo head coach Mo Lingist, uh, who we already talked about earlier. Uh, Lingus left his MAC head coaching job to be a member of the Crimson Tide defensive staff with Womack. Uh, Lingus went 3-9 and nine at Buffalo this past season. He was 14-23 and 23 overall. He had a, a pretty crazy career path, right? Uh, DB's coach at Iowa State for two years. He was at Mississippi State under Mullen for one season, Minnesota for one season, uh, Texas A&M uh, for two seasons as cornerbacks coach. Uh, then he joined the Dallas Cowboys as DB's coach for a year. He was hired as the co-defensive coordinator for Michigan under Jim Harbaugh, uh, but then was hired almost immediately, uh, like three months later, uh, as Buffalo's head coach before he ever coached the Wolverines. And now... He ends up at Alabama. So Buffalo, who we could say was having difficulties in the post-Lance Leipold era, uh, they've turned to South Carolina associate head coach and special teams coach Pete Limbo. Uh, he was the head coach at Lehigh, at Elon, and finally at Ball State, uh, where he went 33-29 and 29 from 2011 through 2015. That includes a 10-win season in 2013. So let's, uh, let's go in order here. Nick Saban was replaced by Washington's Kalen DeBoer. Uh, who was replaced by Arizona's Jed Fish, who was then replaced by San Jose State's Brent Brennan, who was then replaced by former Navy coach Ken Niamatololo. And DeBoer, of course, hired uh, South Alabama's Kane Womack, who was replaced by Major Applewhite. And he also hired Buffalo's Mo Lingist, who was replaced by South Carolina special teams coordinator Pete Limbo. Now, we just got to wait to see what kind of dominoes fall if Jim Harbaugh decides to leave for the NFL. It's the way it goes. Before we close things out, let's hit some rapid-fire news. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Like the video for me. <laughs> uh, LSU finished out their offensive coaching staff by promoting quarterback coach Joe Sloan and the wide receiver coach uh, Cortez Hankton to co-offensive coordinator positions. And uh, as of today, they hired former Tulane offensive coordinator Slade Nagel as their tight ends coach. Uh, that is quite the haul to go along with bringing in Blake Baker from Missouri as their defensive coordinator and, of course, getting defensive line coach Bo Davis to leave Texas for Baton Rouge. That coaching staff looks nasty uh, for Brian Kelly. Uh, rumors about him potentially going to Michigan. I don't think that'd be smart, but you never know with these things. Uh, former Mississippi State quarterback Will Rogers announced he's going to stay at Washington, uh, where he committed and uh, then enrolled to play for Kalen DeBoer. Uh, he's going to spend his last college football season playing for Jed Fish in Seattle rather than trying to find another team uh, this late in the game. Makes sense. 
Uh, the ACC is going to be announcing their 2024 schedule soon. They've already announced the week one games and their Thursday and Friday night games for this season. It's okay if you were a bit shocked to see you know names like SMU, Stanford, and Cal on the list of games. Yes, they are a part of the ACC starting the season. Yes, it's still weird to see it. Uh, this is going to be a weird year. Not just in the ACC, just overall. Just overall. Uh, there are reports that the Los Angeles Chargers and Jim Harbaugh are close to a deal, but, I mean, who knows what happens there, right? I'm sure we're going to talk about it on the show at some point whenever something actually happens. He does have a contract extension on the table from Michigan that's going to make him the highest-paid coach uh, in college football. We'll see if he takes it. Who knows? Uh, Tony Altimore. Altimore. I hope I say that right. He's at TJ Altimore on Twitter. Uh, he put up a graphic showing that 50% of all college football viewership comes from only 18 teams. It's, uh, it's eight SEC schools, seven Big Ten schools, two ACC schools, and Notre Dame. I am certain we are going to be talking more about this in the future because uh, I've got some other things that I want to bring up in regards to this. Uh, but for now, that's going to wrap up today's show. Uh, who knows what will happen between now and the next show, which should be later this week, probably Friday. Uh, I do know that we're going to be talking about Ohio State going all in on the 2024 season, uh, the lack of Texas A&M hype right now, Florida versus the NCAA, uh, the Iowa sports gambling situation, and and maybe we'll talk about the uh, the article where an NFL VP said that if they were commissioner of the NFL, they would purchase the CFP, along with I'm sure a whole lot more. Uh, I appreciate you guys for tuning in and for being patient with me. Right, Remember, this is a one-man show. I research, I film, I edit, I, I create thumbnails, I write the descriptions, everything on the show. And it's a lot of fun. But with a four-month-old and a five-year-old and my oldest in her first year of college, eh, sometimes things get busy, right? So the more you watch and the more you subscribe and... All that kind of stuff. The more opportunities uh, that I can hire a team to help do all this stuff, which is the goal. Because I'd rather be on here just talking, right? So do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, and make sure and share it out. Of course, leave your comments. Uh, I want to hear your thoughts on all of this all the time. Uh, I love the uh, the community that we've got here. Uh, if there's anything you want me to talk about on the show, uh, you can leave a comment or hit me up on Twitter at Winning Cures, or you can hit me up through email. Gary at winningcureseverything.com. I think that's it uh, for now. Anyway, let's go on and finish this thing off. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football, and I hope all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.